Well, good morning, everyone. I invite you to please stand and we'll sing our opening song together. And it's called My Soul is Welcome Here. today. And um, you know what, the coolest thing that I was thinking about is with so many people watching from uh, for church from their home, I just imagine everybody sitting back in some kind of barco lounger, <laughs> you know, a lazy boy chair, right? And you got your coffee, and maybe you got your little breakfast sandwich. And I hope wherever you are, like all of you here, I hope you're relaxed. And I hope you feel like you are welcome to be a part of Unity Williamsburg Spiritual Center. So thank you, thank you. So let's just start our time together with just a little prayer. So wherever you are, take a deep breath. Begin to kind of scan your body. Make it, just make it so comfortable, so relaxed. You know, this is a precious moment that we all share together. And our lives are busy. Our lives have changed a lot over the last few months. But right here, right now, we can relax. We can relax and feel that comfort and presence of each one of us. Whether we're whether here in person or not, we feel that energy of life moving in and through us. We are grateful. We're grateful. When we get into that consciousness of gratitude, just think of something that's been going on this week in your life that you really feel wonderful about. What is it that you did? Or maybe somebody did something for you. Get in that consciousness of that joy, feeling blessed, feeling loved, feeling cherished. Yeah. And that's the consciousness that we move through our service with today. Because we know that no matter where you are, you are welcome here. We hope to see you here one day, too, when things get a little, little shifted. But just know how much you are loved and appreciated and are welcomed here today. And so it is. Amen. All right, so we, the next thing we have is 
reading together, what is Unity Williamsburg all about? So let's just say this together. That Unity Williamsburg is a radiant center of divine life, life and love. We are a thriving, prosperous, spiritual community that honors the divine presence in all and celebrates our oneness through loving service in our community. That's what we're all about here. I think you all are nodding your heads, right? Yeah. See, they can't see. So yeah, you're all nodding your heads. <laughs> very good. So now we have a chance to meet and greet one another with our beautiful um, affirmation that the Christ in me greets the Christ in you. And I invite you to stand up, look around, face each other, look in each other's eyes, and acknowledge the God presence within that person. Christ in me greets the Christ in you. say that beautiful greeting, it truly is to acknowledge that each one of us is a unique presence of God in the world. And in unity, we call that the Christ. So let's say um, the Lord's Prayer together as we're standing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Or 
something? Yes, please. Um, for our friend Lee Kara, for healing, um, and for um, Chiquita McCarthy in the transitioning of her daughter this week. took it to the post office, the postable clerk said, is there anything breakable in here? She smiled and said, only the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Somebody has said there are only two kinds of people in the world. There are those who wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Lord. And there are others who wake up and say, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> Which one are we? In Unity Church, we should be the former. Uh, oh, Sunday school teacher was teaching class to a bunch of kindergarten uh, children and said, so before we start talking about God, what do you know about God? And one little boy raised his hand and said, he's an artist. And you know what? I can take this off. Yeah. Sorry, you don't need to remind me about this so you can hear what I'm saying. Uh, he said, he's an artist. And the teacher was kind of surprised. He said, well, how do you know that? He says, well, every Sunday we start out, our father whose art is in heaven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's logical, right? Yes. And uh, another time, uh, once a mother was ill, so the little girl went to church with her father. And when they came home, the mother said, so what did the minister talk about today? And he said, well, she said, don't be scared, Mom. You're going to get a quote someday. She went, what? You know? Well, she happened to meet the minister the next day and said, could you tell me what you talked about yesterday? And he said, yeah, I talked about 
Be not afraid, thy comforter is coming. <laughs> and on the, uh, the headboard out in front of a church one day with great big bold letters was Jesus is coming. And then in much smaller letters in parentheses it said, hopefully before the elections. Uh, <laughs> and I say the last one in honor of Robert. Uh -oh. So the minister was very concerned because one Sunday he was going to talk about tithing and then he had to talk about the finances because the church was struggling a little bit. So he went over to the pianist and said, here's the order of service and I want you to play something appropriate after I talk about finances. Well, the pianist well, what do you want me to play? And the minister got a little irritated because he thinks that play whatever you think is appropriate. And he walked away from him. So again, the minister gave his, uh, his talk. And uh, afterwards he said, you know, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, our roof needs repairing. So we need about $4,000 for that. And we need some money for a new oven in the fellowship room and we need to be sure we have enough money for to pay the pianist. So anybody who's willing to pledge at least a hundred dollars, please stand up. With that, the pianist played the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> and the following week he got a pay raise. <laughs> Okay, so be serious now. So our our uh, word for the day is I'm a steadfast spiritual speaker. And could you all say that together with me? I am a steadfast spiritual speaker. Wow, kind of alliteration. <laughs> no matter where I may be on my path, sometimes my spiritual life feels easy, and sometimes it feels hard. There are times when I enjoy new insights, blissful clarity, and peace. But at other times, I may struggle, feeling stuck and directionless, or even lonely on my walk with God. At times like these, I renew my commitment to my spiritual path. Although my attention may have wandered, the divine presence within me has always remained steadfast, as near as my next thought. Wherever I am in space, time, or consciousness, I discover the love, strength, and wisdom of God expressing through me. And from the book of Psalms, if I take wings in the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. Anywhere we go on earth, God is there. And the scripture reading for today is from the book of Ephesians, in chapter 4. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, your corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirits of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with the new self, created according to the likeness of God and to in true righteousness and holiness. Uh, we're going to have a special song by a lady called Sue Riley, who is a singer of, of the of our kind of music, and Steve will be playing it from a CD and back. Then Reverend Jenny is going to have uh, the first half of the subject transition to transformation. And then Reverend Denise will do the, the part two next week.
And in fact, I used to say when they were, um, I still say it today, but they just make fun of me. But I'll say, why don't you grow down? You know, instead of growing up. But see, our nature is to grow up. The nature for the um, crayfish is to lose that skeleton, be out there in the scary, scary world for a little while while they're be beginning to build another skeleton for themselves so that they're protected and can move on with their life. And you know what? In, in some of the things in our lives, we don't really have a lot of choice. Like I was, um, there was something that um, I'll share with you. Like our bodies do a lot of a lot of shedding of things and coming back into life. Every 60 seconds, our body loses 300 million cells. Now they don't argue about it. They kind of come and then they go. And um, and then every day, 10 to 50 trillion cells are replaced in our body. And these changes are constant. And our body cells constantly are die, that they die and are reborn again. Now, wouldn't it be nice if when other changes in our life could be that easy? I think about our bodies, certainly we don't have a choice if the cells are going to leave and they're going to rebuild new ones. But in our spiritual growth, we have all the opportunity to choose what is it that we want in our lives. How do we want to grow? How do we want to allow that spirit, let's see, have, um, let's see, uh, renew my commitment to my spiritual path? We get to decide that. And one of the ways that this starts out is we have to make a change. I know for many of you that are in this room, you have already committed yourself to a spiritual journey. It was, it's not automatic. And especially in unity, I think we're one of the only, um, in my mind, only um, spiritual um, teachings that you really have to do a little bit of work, you know, to move from um, from maybe just living in the physical world to really recognizing yourself as a spiritual being and how that interacts with the physical world. But you got to do something, so you got to change. In Robert Rummett's book, Finding Yourself in Transition, he says that there is a desire within each of us to grow and change. Now think about that. We certainly wouldn't want to still be like we were at 10 years old. Or maybe some of us would. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? There's this, there's this inner energy that wants to move us into the, into the next stage. To awaken within us, what are some other things that, that you are here to express in the world so that we can step into those things? In the book, uh, Robert talks about three stages of this transition process. First, there's an ending. There's a dying to the familiar and the release of what no longer serves. Now, in Unity, a lot of times we'll talk about denials and affirmations. And denials is one of the things that we say no. We, we no longer believe this, and now we are going to move ahead and start thinking about things this way. So you deny that that has any power over you, because now you're awakening to something new. You're transitioning to something new. Then there's the void. This is the one that we probably don't like the most, because there's this time when we wait, and we're not really doing anything, except... We would want to be praying. We would want to be meditating. We would want to be seeing, what, what, what am I being called to do next? Intuition. And then the last thing is the new beginning, where something new begins to emerge. Now, change is a natural process, and it is inevitable. And as we look through our spiritual eyes, to, um, no matter what, when we look out through our spiritual eyes, we recognize that there are more things for us to do. That there is this sense within us for more, for more expression of ourselves in different ways. So change is all around us. It is constant. Uh, we think about change going on. Just think about the change in our physical world. Who would have ever thought at the beginning of 2020 what we would be doing in October of 2020. I don't think anybody could have even dreamt them up. Maybe in a, a sci-fi movie or something like that. 
But what I'm saying is, how many things have you had to adjust because of just what's going on in the physical world? What are some things that you've had to change? Anybody? <laughs> Masks. Masks, right? Some people haven't left their home. Yes. Other people's attitudes. Other people's attitudes about what's going on, the changes going on. The fear. Oh, fear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not being able to see family as much as you are used to and want to. Yeah. A lot of people haven't seen their family since March because of, of COVID, right? Um, anything else? Zoom. Everybody's Zooming. Zooming meetings, Zooming schools, right. Zooming. Right. We've had to get to a whole nother world of technology so that we can even stay connected with people, right? Through Zoom and that kind of thing. We can't leave our homes. Many of us have stayed in our homes. Uh, you can't travel as much. You can't eat, enjoy eating in a restaurant in many, in many locations. Um, the elderly that are in you know, facilities, you can't go see them. Um, you can't have family around, you know, if you're in a hospital visit or something like that, you can't do that anymore. But look how much we've adapted. I mean, in six months, we've really adapted a lot to all of these changes. So in the ending change of a process, we have to say, it's no longer like this. Now it looks like this, right? And during the change, as we're ending something and moving and moving through the void and finding out what the new beginning is, we have an opportunity to not just change situations, but we change within ourselves. That's the key. That's the key. Something changes within us. Because as I said before, when, you're, when you are moving through things, when something really is ending for you that is, that is um, very difficult, I mean, let's say that there is a divorce or a death and it's really difficult to imagine not having that, but that's ending. Where do we go? Where do we go to find the answers to this? Where do we go to find peace? We gotta turn within. That's where everything is left. That's where all the answers are located, right? So, as we end things and move into this void, we begin to realize that we have got more strength than we could ever imagine. We realize that we have more determination and that there's wisdom that we could get in touch with that we never even knew we had before. When we're ending something, waiting, and then starting something new. Think about it. I, I kind of think this is kind of interesting. You know, in Jesus' life, he was always challenging people to make major changes in their life. Remember the rich man said, you know, I really want to follow you. And Jesus said, well, go sell everything and give it to the poor. Hmm. Don't know if I want to do that. Right? I don't know if I want to change that much. How about to the Samaritan woman at the well? Remember, she was prostitute he said live your life from a higher perspective than that of the flesh we don't, we don't, how did what did she decide to do could she change the way that she was living her life to the man at the pool of Bethesda when Jesus said remember the, the gentleman that kept sitting there and, and he couldn't get in the pool because nobody put him in the pool but he knew that people got healed when they got in the pool and Jesus says do you want to be healed and change your life did. And then to Zachariah um, Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector. And Jesus invited him to change because he was a little bit on the greedy side. But we can decide if we want to do the change or not. But sometimes it's so miserable. We are so miserable. It's so painful. We don't have any choice but to change. And to transform into something new. So what happens in this idea of the void? This stage is characterized by a feeling of emptiness and a sense of wandering in the wilderness or being adrift at sea. Are you thinking now of any time in your life where you have had to end something and then all be in this, be in this void for a period of time when you really felt, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm, well, what I'm gonna do. Anybody feel that way? Yeah. I mean, you do. You feel like you're in a fog, don't you? <clears throat> Emptiness, 
wandering in the wilderness. Robert Brummett says, in the void, time and space seems to lose their former reality. And self seems like a phantom, a ghost from a former incarnation. It feels flat and empty, and nothing seems quite real. Every attempt to snap out of it or pull ourselves together ultimately proves futile. It's like trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Mm -hmm. We don't like having to change. But there's so many blessings in it. The void touches our deepest fears of helplessness, abandonment, and death, and we feel very vulnerable, just like that little crayfish did. However, the void can be seen as a passageway to becoming truly alive and fully awake. That's the promise. If you get through it, you're going to be even more alive and more awake. In the void, we may encounter maybe what we think is a new beginning. So let's say we've lost the job. And, um, and right now, of course, a lot of that, people are going through a lot of that now because of all sorts of, of, of all, because of the virus thing and all sorts of things that have come from that. But then you think, well, let me just, I'll, I'll just, as soon as something ends, we automatically think I gotta do something. You know, we don't like that feeling of nothing happening. So I gotta make something happen. Okay, let me go make something happen. I'm gonna find something to do. I'm gonna instead of allowing yourselves or ourselves to just be in that void and see what opportunities might come up. Not slip into such fear that my gosh, the next thing you're doing is um, anything. Wait, wait, listen. See what kind of opportunities um, open up. How many times have you heard of people that have lost a job and they wound up doing what they've always wanted to do? They'll go, you know what? That was the best thing that ever happened to me. Right? All of a sudden they wind up opening a shop that they, you know, they always wanted to do. Or they start teaching something that they've always wanted to do. Or they move to another part of the country. I've always wanted to live in Montana. I'm going to go there. Let's go. So sometimes these things that look like they're, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, are such a blessing for us. But we got to put on our spiritual eyes to see that and not get in, a, in fear and panic. It says, um, during that time of being in the void, you actually have a time to think about, once again, who am I? What is real? What is my life about? And what is my place in the world? Those are questions that you can ask yourself within, you know, so that you feel drawn from that spirit within you to, to look, re look at things again, readjust. What can be wonderful? What can come of this? We use this time for prayer and meditation, listening to our intuition, waiting for that inner spirit to guide and direct us. And we have to hold on to our faith that everything is unfolding perfectly even before we can ever receive, ever see a result in the world. And think about that. We talk about divine order in unity. What does that mean? That means there is an energy that is, that is moving through things in a, in a beautiful way. But sometimes boy, we want to get our hands on that steering wheel and boy, we want to get down that road fast instead of allowing that beautiful spirit within us to really touch us and move us in a direction we may, we may never have thought about. Or sometimes we, we actually can have that little touch with something that we wanted to do when we were a little child. You know, when I was little, I was always wanted to do da-da-da-da. So one of mine is, I've always wanted to be an actress. <laughs> So I guess this is this is my actress stuff right here, right? But I mean, sometimes you get in touch with things that you wanted to do when you were a little when you were little, and now you have a chance to do it, right? And that and that energy of life kind of takes you along. and says, "Go try it, go try it out, see how that works for you." This is the way that spirit wants to express for you. One of the things in the void it says, uh, avoid making major decisions because remember you're kind of in a little bit of a fog. Don't hurry the void. Pray and meditate. 
Spirit has a plan that is unfolding. Sometimes it doesn't unfold overnight. So that little boy, that wait time. Pay attention to your dreams. Keep a journal. Uh, talk about and write anything that goes on in your day that you see that's good. Because a lot of times our mind's going to kind of take us down the uh, a road of, oh my gosh, um, fear and uncertainty and anxiety. And then uh, surround yourself with people that will support you and not be negative and go, oh, you know, the job market, really down now. Probably not going to be a chance you're going to get to find something. You know, you don't want to be around those people. You want to be around people that say, yeah, I, I support you. I know you're going to find what's right and perfect for you. Right? And lastly, lastly, um, Eileen Cady in Footprints on the Path says, have no fear of moving into the unknown. Simply step out fearlessly, knowing that I am with you. Therefore, no harm can befall you. All is very, very well. Do this in complete faith and confidence. So let's just take a moment. Take a breath. <sighs> Maybe something that was said in the song or something that I've said or something along the way, the music has ignited within you uh, something to take into this time of meditation. So as you take a breath and uh, relax once again, Open ourselves up to, I don't know, unlimited possibilities. You know, everything's changing, but wow, where could that take me now? There's a beautiful poem by James Dillett Freeman. I'll read that during our time of meditation, and it says this. Do you need me? I am there. You cannot see me, yet I am the light you see by. Not hear me, yet I speak through your voice. You cannot feel me, yet I am the power at work in your hands. I am at work through you, even though you do not understand my ways. I am at work through you, even though you do not recognize my works. I'm not strange visions. I'm not mystery. Only in absolute stillness, beyond self, can you know me as I am. And then, but as a feeling and a faith, yet I am there. I hear you. I answer you. When you need me, I am there. So just take that into the quiet of these few moments. once again. Just take that beautiful feeling of quiet and calm and peace <clears throat> and knowing that that Spirit of God always is with you. No matter what the week holds for you, you walk in that light. So now is our, our, our opportunity 
to do our offering and our offering affirmation. So if you are at home and you are going to be blessing us, and then you can go to our website and you can um, uh, send us a, a blessing there. And all of you here, if you have your blessing, you can hold it in your hand. And we're so, we are so blessed here at Unity Williamsburg Spiritual Center. And so we hold it in our hands. And if you want to hold it near your heart, just to send that, that beautiful gift, love, as it blesses our church community and goes out into our community in many ways. And then let's say our blessing, divine love, through me, blessings multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. And we know that the uh, basket's in the back as we sing our song. Trying to find what feels like home 
traveling back to you. certain in life is change, and, the, and that's always stuck with me, and that, you know, and I've come to understand that through all the teachings that we've been through for all this time. Yes, everything changes every day, so don't resist it. Good talk. Okay, announcements. Uh, prayer chaplain for today is uh, Susan Cardozo, and uh, you're going to be in the back of the church or outside? No, I'll hover back there. The back of the church. Fine. Okay. All right. Um, fine. Uh, if you have a prayer request at all that comes up during the week, uh, feel to, to uh, send it to uh, Williamsburg at, at unitywilliamsburg at gmail.com and, uh, and you'll be put on the prayer list. And we're still collecting things for both Link and Port. Uh, we're collecting uh, uh, canned goods and we're collecting dry goods like socks, shoes, coats, jeans, underwear. For, for winter for people that need those. So ladies, if you have any old stuff lying around the house that you don't want, bring it in next week. And don't forget your husbands. <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> we got it. We got it. I know. It wasn't that funny. Sorry. Uh, there's a, a board meeting today. And uh, everybody's welcome to attend the board meeting, and we're going to be signing the contracts with our two new ministers that we have. So uh, it's really a big occasion today. And uh, please also, we're coming up, we need to have elections in January for uh, new board members. And so please consider, if you've never served as a board member, uh, stepping up and, and serving the board. You'll find it very rewarding. They have about a one hour meeting once a week, uh, once a month, and uh, it would be certainly giving back some of the service to the church. And next week, as we mentioned, Reverend Denise will do the second half of the talk that Reverend Jenny uh, started today. Any other announcements from the floor? No? Okay, can we stand for the peace song, please? Mm -hmm. That's it, peace song.
thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And to just know that wherever you are, God is. And guess what? All is well. Yes. Bless you all. Bless you. Bless you.